Good morning, it's Richard again, and this is the next stage of my electric car project. Uh, what we have here is the motor that I intend to use. Uh, you might have seen it in an earlier video that came out of a, a forklift. It's a bit bigger than the one in the background. Uh, this one here, uh, including the nuts that protrude at the back here, connections, which always have to leave a gap for. This motor. This is about 16 inches. Um, this is the one that rotates in the right direction, and it has a, a coupling. The inside of that, I hope you can see, is like the inside of a clutch plate. This is the bit of the pump jar that came off of it. As you can see, it's got a spline then, which fits in there. I believe so. That's what I hope to use as my drive. It's um, basically keyed on there, as you can see, it's got a, a lock nut and a locking tab on there somewhere that's a bit bent up now. So that's what I intend to use. I'm hoping to get a, a local machine shop that I know to basically do the work on this end of it. Uh, and what I want them to do, this is the clutch plate over here that's come out of the rover, taking this off the engine this morning. Uh, basically what I'm after doing, as others have done, is take out the middle piece of this mount it on there actually on the end there and basically this bit here will obviously be the clutch plate and that should mesh with the input shot of the gearbox where that clutch came from so we know it's going to fit uh, as i said the measurement here is about 16 inches of the length of this motor including the studs that stick out the end um, what I've been trying to do, I'll just put the gearbox of the rover back in, which is back over here. Basically, I've got the, the uh, gearbox slung in there at the moment, back on its uh, original mounting. And what I was after doing, is the reason I've done this was basically to measure the gap that I've got on that existing engine mounting. To the bell housing, which is about 20 inches. So I thought I'd leave about 17 for the motors. That gives me plenty of space to get to the terminals on the back. And obviously, a little bit of well, would be that end where the terminals are, would be quite close to that engine mount on the chassis there. So basically, I'm, what I'm saying is between the face of the bell housing and the face of the motor, I've got three inches to spare. So my coupler, I have a, a gap in the middle of three inches, and obviously. The motor cup in one end and the gearbox cup on the other. Uh, what I intend to do now is to take this bed housing or this gearbox back out and to start making start plans for the adapter plate. I'm going to be using an L shaped adapter plate because that motor I've just shown you has only got attachments underneath it. It's already got a plate on there already, which will act as a, uh, a good pattern. Um, I've had a measure across here I was chatting about before that distance across there is about 11 inches and my motor over there is significantly less than that so my fear of um, this bit here touching the casing has uh, hopefully been proved to be unfound because the, uh, the motor I'm using is a bit smaller diameter than the one I showed you earlier on the, uh, the bigger one uh, what I'm intending to do is to try and make a plate, obviously, to go over the end of this bell housing. And there's plenty of adjustment on the holes. It obviously, got a bell housing hole here, another one here, and so forth. Uh, that way, I'm hoping any shimmy that I need, I can do uh, via movement in those bolts there initially. And then maybe have to um, reduce it later on once I get the motor running on the gearbox and there's no vibration and noise. What I intended to do, because we've got a number of blind holes down the bottom of this bell house, and there's some small holes. In fact, there's three small holes. One there, one there, and one there that don't go right way through. The first one that does go right way through is obviously this side. So the bottom of the gearbox will effectively got uh, no real mounting points on it. So I need to um, obviously locate the hose. So what I'm going to try and do is rather than um, just start cut out a piece of metal 
Um, my idea was to try and mount a clear sheet of plastic, like that bit that I have just got hold of, for um, a few pounds from the local home-based DIY centre. Basically, I want to uh, put that over the gearbox. Obviously, I can then see through it and see where the mounting holes are, so I can easily locate the blind holes. Obviously, when you've got the sh any metal, you can obviously mark from the back onto the metal plate, but obviously you can't see through it to make the blind holes. So that's uh, what I'm going to hope to do now, to get this bell in or gearbox out, get it um, turned upside down, sort of face upwards, um, and start cutting the sheet out to go over that, and obviously start cutting all the holes out as well. Um, I've got to a local firm that I know who does do quite a bit of manufacturing and he says he's got quite a bit of scrap um, metal plate lying around so if I tell him the dimensions I want that should be okay. I'm probably looking at only using about a quarter inch or five mil plate um, because it is basically going to be a, a nil shaped plate anyway. I'm not mounting the motor on the plate. I'm just mount, It's basically just being used as a, a reference point on the bell housing. Obviously I'll put struts on it as well to sort of try and stop any twist and maybe a, um, a mount a brace from the motor casing onto a chassis member of some sort to stop any uh, any twist of the, uh, the transmission altogether. Uh, that's about it for now, so I'm going to get this out and see what I can get done today and maybe uh, do another video later on. Bye for now.